Alrighty guys, we're back for Gold Explosion, and this is an Outlaws of Thunder Junction standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. This one's based on Gold Rush. It's a one in a green instant speed. Create a treasure token. Until end of turn, up to one target creature gets plus two plus two for each treasure you control. That's pretty interesting. So what other things in here generate treasure tokens? So we have Ancestor's Aid as a four of. Target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains first strike until end of turn and you create a treasure token. And then we also have Gold Hound in here. It's a one mana one one treasure dog. It has first strike and menace and you can tap it, sack it, add one mana of any color. Beautiful. So honestly, if you have Gold Hound or two Gold Hounds on the board, right, and you drop a Gold Rush on it, you're actually pretty happy about that, giving it either like plus four, plus four, or like I said, if you have two Gold Hounds, you're giving one of them plus six, plus six, and it has First Strike and Menace, so, and all that's a combat trick at instant speed, so the opponent might have already let it go through, uh, even if they had a couple creatures to block with. That's pretty sick, so what else do we have for like the whole concept of explosion. Well, of course, Slick Sot Show Off had to make the cut. Bro, everyone and their grandmother is now playing Slick Shot Show Off, and I can see why. It's a two mana, one, two, flying, haste. It has plot for the casting cost, so just one in a red. You can plot it, you can plot it for that cost, and then you exile it, and then you cast it as a sorcerer in a later turn without paying its mana cost, plot only as a sorcerer. And you do that when you just know that the opponent's gonna remove it. And then you try to have a really fast explosive turn by playing it for free uh, later on. So this is very much a Picnic Ruiner style of build too. Has that adventure side for a three and a green that will activate every now and then. Sorcery. Distribute three plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control. That's good. Now Picnic Ruiner is a two two. And when it attacks while you control a creature with power four or greater, which should be really, really easy in this deck, Picnic Ruiner gets Double Strike until end of turn, which of course Double Strike is going to be excellent in here. And when you're piling things like Monstrous Rage and whatnot onto the Picnic Ruiner, of course, yeah, all four Monstrous Rage had to make the cut. Same thing with the Monastery Swift Spear. We also have all four Ancestral Angers as well. The Trample on the Anger and the Rage is going to be terrific. You can Trample Audacity made the cut as a two of as well. Royal Treatment for some protection as well as Snakeskin Veil. The big reason to have four snakeskin veil over like four royal treatment and one veil is that the royal roll doesn't stack upon itself whereas the plus one plus one counters do stack upon itself but it is worth noting that the royal roll gives your creature the ward one two which could go the extra mile okay guys one more card twin inferno also making the cut should it be more than one of yeah probably <laughs> maybe we'll go like mid video and like we'll we'll try out a couple of them instead but uh, most of the time, well, not most of the time, there's going to be moments where you have multiple Twin Infernos in hand, and you're kind of a little bit sad about that, so, uh, really, you just want to see one in hand at any given time, and then it still requires an amount of explosion on the board. So, uh, you get to choose one of these. Uh, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, you copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy, that could be good. Or just target creature you control gains double strike, which of course is going to be really good. Put onto the slick shot show off. So yeah, nice. That's it, guys. It's actually it should be a janky version of Gruel as we're just trying out this gold rush. We're trying to do something fancy with it. There's definitely a more competitive Gruel list that would rock the slick shot show off. But overall, I you know, gold rush could totally be good. <laughs> what if you have a couple gold hounds? and you have that slick shot show off dropping a gold rush onto the show off would be pretty wild as you're if you had a couple gold hounds already you generate that extra treasure token then slick shot show off gets plus six plus six then plus two as well and then also after that you can use your treasure to like activate that twin inferno to give it double strike as well that is in fact a line of play in here okay early land of course some pain land, some rockfall veils, who endures, and a crucible of defiance. We're leaning red because that's what the deck is leaning towards. Honorable mentions, all of these almost made the cut. Cacophony Scamp, Great Train Heist, Antagonize, Blazing Crescendo, Fugitive Code Breaker, Lightning Strike, and Play With Fire, and every other burn spell that you've ever seen. Uh, Jolene also almost made the cut, but not this time round. 
It's a janky version of Gruel, but I didn't want to go that janky. Uh, we also have 20 total land should be enough for this build. All right, let's go ahead, take this into some ranked, and see how we do. All right, guys, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. In the meantime, what am I expecting from the build? Okay. Okay. It's going to be janky, but... But... <laughs> It should have some crazy explosive power. So there's going to be like that one game today where we're just like completely taken aback. Oh, no creatures in our opener. We go first. We can't keep this, right? Man, I like everything else. All we needed was one creature, one slick shot show off. We can draw off the angers. No, we should mulligan down to six, huh? Okay, there we go. There we go. Royal treatment? Is that what we send? Feels a little bad. Maybe we should keep that. Send an anger? I like the double angers, though. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it's royal treatment, because I want to keep both creatures in case the opponent removes one right away. Land off the top wouldn't be terrible, especially if it was a red source. We'll have two turns to see that land off the top. Okay, maybe three turns. So they surveilled a memory deluge off the top. That was a great surveil for the opponent. Ooh, Saltai. Shigeki. Okay, hey, there we go. Not bad. We could go right into the Ancestral Anger this turn. We could set up with Picnic Ruiner, too. Uh, this doesn't have haste, so a little bit of setup might be required. At any point, the opponent could keep open removal, too, once they know. They double down on removal next turn. That could be pretty bad. So maybe we take the turn to set up with the Picnic Ruiner. Um, okay. Okay. Never mind. I'm actually just going to take the turn to set up with the show off instead. How do you guys feel about that? How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, just a little bit more set up here. Yeah, they could keep open... They could keep open removal, which would be bad. But what I'm thinking... So if we would have just played our Slickshot show off as a 1-2, and then played our other one for free... And then played our Ancestral Anger. It would have been a good swing. Ah, Picnic Ruiner off the top is actually pretty bad. Let's see if Picnic Ruiner can... Can eat some, um... Some removal from the opponent's hand. I don't like that they kept three open here, guys. That's the big thing. We could draw off of the Anger, but I'd much rather just play both once those Slick Shots are on the board. Yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for just one turn of just like the most explosive thing you can imagine. That means the opponent wants to continuously keep open removal. They also didn't active. Uh oh, we're losing an anger. Luckily, it goes into the grave, but like that's actually pretty bad. Yeah, that, that's pretty bad to lose. Okay, Crucible. Not great. We get the draw on the Anger. Might be a counter spell. We play around to make disappear nicely. All right, I guess this is the turn where we try, huh? Slick shot, slick shot. They have Shigeki's ability open. It might literally just be the Shigeki's ability. Or it might be some tempo, too. It could be like a fading hope for the Ruiner. That would be pretty bad, because we won't get the draw on the Anger. They might want to tap us out for the turn, too. Oh, Colossal Sky Turtle. Ancestor Anger fizzles out. We don't get the draw. That was actually really, really good for the opponent. All right. I'll set up with the Picnic Ruiner again, and at this point, anything off the top would be great. I'm going to keep that Crucible of Defiance back as utility. I don't think we need a fourth mana on the board right now. 
Oh crap, guys. Was all that because of my greed for not doing more on our turn three? No double strike on the Ruiner. 20 mana in here. We got five in hand on the top 11 cards. I'd call that a flood, right? Just probably set up the other Picnic Ruiner. Well... Nah, we'll we'll risk we'll risk the stolen goods. Yep, we'll risk it. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, we'll spread it wide here, right? Activate both of those. Hopefully, it lands. I think it's a worthwhile risk because Picnic Ruiner gets the double strike on the ground. Then, nice. Okay, P maybe. Just Shigeki's ability. They're missing some land, so. They could block the 3-3 three, three double strike. Activate Shigeki's ability since Picnic Ruiner doesn't have trample. They take 8 in the air and potentially find some land on that ability. Could be another Sky Turtle, too. Mm, generic removal. March. Okay. March for four. They go back up to 18 here, down to 10. That was pretty good. That was a good turn for the opponent. Mm, still missing mana, though. I wonder exactly what deck they're playing. GG opponent. I understand the concede there. Missing, missing mana in Saltai definitely seems a little weird. Uh, we saw too much mana and then also had some stuff fizzling out too probably my fault for the order that i ended up playing things i wasn't expecting the duress for sure then the second ancestral anger uh didn't hit its mark so we didn't get to replenish our hand either so that could have went either way easily and yeah, that, that could have easily been the opponents had they seen a little bit more mana too like at any point shielded could have come down with Shigeki in there, we have to think it's probably like Saltai Mill or Self Mill or like Graveyard or some, something along those lines. Probably what the opponent was playing there. All right. We will keep this. Look at our horsies. I love the horsies. That's so adorable, man. Get ready with that Swift Spear. We're very happy about that Swiss Spear coming down. As long as it can survive the untap, then Snakeskin Veil will be perfect for it. Um, at what point do we want to use the Ancestor's Aid and keep the treasure open for the Veil? Probably whenever we decide that pushing the maximum amount of damage early is best. So that's going to come down to our draws too. Alright, swing for one. Good to go first. Gold rush. All right, dude. <laughs> what are we thinking? Activate Ancestor's Aid or just keep two snakeskin veils open? Ancestor's Aid. Maximum damage. We have Snakeskin Veil available, but hopefully we don't have to use it. I'd much rather keep that treasure on the board for the Gold Rush. And of course, activating Snakeskin Veil on our turn is much better. Ah, GG opponent. GG, I would have loved to play that one out. Of course, that's how I feel about most games. So if they didn't have anything for the Swiss Spear... On our next turn, play Crucible as a land, Gold Rush on the Swift Spear, two treasures, plus four, plus four, plus the prowess. So Swift Spear off the Gold Rush is a six, seven. Okay, and we have two available treasures open too. So if they had like, if they kept their mana open for removal, like Snakeskin Veil on top of the stack, of course, that's an extra counter plus the hex proof plus the prowess uh and then so we didn't have lethal yet but we had what 10 damage or so 
that's pretty sick and we wouldn't have went for it we would have just kept the other snakeskin veil back as protection too a really good hand guys it really was uh risking the risking the extra damage on turn two was worth it i would say although sometimes risking plays like that is not worth it at all and you get super punished all right what well, i'm talking about dude no pro oh yeah, yeah yeah i was gonna say no protection for the swiss spear but yeah snakeskin veil we still probably get swiss spear down turn one though right still worthwhile i hope so let's not get punished here ah okay kamana could have been a play with fire easily all right draw on anger or just get audacity down and be happy about it audacity that might tempt them to take this out with a lightning strike and then the snake skin veil is just brutal okay they still have one open looks like they're gonna go for maximum damage here oh they don't need a lightning strike play with fire would also hit this swiss spear well, they might keep this one mountain. I really want them to try to take out the Swift Spear. All right, let's do this. Snakeskin Veil. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. Second Swift Spear is good. I'll tell you what, dude. I'll tell you what. Start with the Ancestral Anger. We're going all in. Oh, Picnic Ruiner, huh? They're tapped out, guys. We're just doing the Monstrous Rage now. We're going for that swing. Oh, buddy, that's big damage. Holy cow. All right. All right, opponent, what you got for us, huh? Removal on the biggest Swift Spear would be good. They don't know what's in hand. Even land off the top would be decent for us if we can keep these Swift Spears around. Because we'll have stolen goodies. Okay, lightning strike. I was on the edge of my seat, dude. We draw off the audacity so we can easily still get through. Another swift spear. They do keep a blocker back. They do keep two blockers back. No, no, no. Biggest blocker to get around the trample. Snake skin veil. That'll do it. That'll do it. Full swing and veil on either one of these. It's the two through. Good game opponent. <laughs> we saw exactly what we needed to see when we needed to see it. Beautiful stuff overall. Uh, third Swift Spirit. So good, dude. So good. All right. Well, let's get right into the next one, huh? We got to see the Gold Rush do something. So, so far, like, even if we... Okay, something we need to consider, actually, maybe. No, 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 never mind, never mind. I was going to say maybe going down to, like, two Picnic Ruiners, but we won't have enough creatures in here, I would say, at that point. Like, we, we already don't have too many creatures. Well, I mean, this hand has a lot of creatures, but opponent goes first. No turn one. This is Rockfall Veil. We have two of those in here. Slowing us down a little bit. We should mulligan, right? Yeah, yeah. We probably should. I like. I think I'd usually like to risk a hand like that, but get much better. But there was something about that. It, it was just way too slow. Like tap land, turn two, one drop. Like no guarantee land off the top. This would have been really, really bad. Is it audacity? I don't want to lose the audacity, but I think it's audacity, unfortunately, because anger replaces itself, and we don't want to get rid of our creatures either. Okay, more swift spears. So proving ground, Jund could be scary. Uh, 
Okay, another forest. I don't know if I want to risk the anger when we, when there's probably removal, right? I'm just going to keep my veil open. Totally fine. Anger would be better when the picnic ruiner is swinging in anyways. Shoulders Edict gets around the snakeskin veil anyways. Nice. We're still going to keep the veil open, I would say. So really slow couple turns then at that point. Especially not getting the setup with the... Um, with them getting the Edict down... Because if that was like a go for the throat or something, that would have been really huge for us. All right. Ass is back. Setting up with Ruiner. It's too bad Ruiner doesn't have haste. Maybe we want something in here that gives haste. Maybe. There are some cards that could do that. Okay. Okay. So it's going to just be the Picnic Ruiner for the turn, right? Okay. Really, really slow first three turns. Uh, Celestis was not a cut down. If it's another Shieldred's Edict, we might be in trouble, dude. Snakeskin Veil vale not helping us out at all at that point. Uh, we'd have to go all in on the Picnic Ruiner then maybe, right? With the double strike. Five mana open and they're passing it back. Got to be some spot removal. Gaining a little bit of life here could be huge too for the opponent. Celestis number two. I, you love to see it, man. I, I, So when I play with Celestis, every now and then, I always bring up like, if you ever see the second Celestis, you just discard it to the first one. So it's awesome to actually see that happen. Oh, Monstrous Rage was a really good draw. Okay, so we'll start by pumping the Swiss Spear. And that gets the Picnic Ruiner to... Well, I guess, I guess everything in on the Picnic Ruiner would have been a little better, huh? Yeah, I guess. Since we have the Veil for protection, they could double down on spot removal, though. Inferno. Could double Monstrous Rage. No, we just got to keep the Snakeskin Veil open. Next up, we get, we don't put all of our eggs in one basket, just in case they do double down on spot removal, but we need to make sure before the swing that the Picnic Ruiner gets up to the double strike we need. Actually, if it's not double spot removal, we might have just missed lethal damage. But it depends. Like, they might just take the 14 without dropping anything. So, like, for example, if we put Snakeskin Veil down beforehand. Big score. Okay. They're still going to have three open, guys. I don't know if we risk this. Because we have 20 damage here if we go Twinferno onto Swiss Spear. Twinferno double strike onto Swiss Spear. Shieldred's Edict. That's perfect for this list, man. Okay, it's we sacrifice Swiss Spear. Yeah, so not putting the anger on the Ruiner. We could get a couple more through, but we need to keep that Snakeskin Veil back. Uh oh, guys, uh oh. I think this is now heavily leaning towards the opponent because I don't know if we're going to be able to keep this Picnic Ruiner around. Going back up to nine here, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced that Picnic Ruiner sees the light of day for next turn. Double shield or Zedek just might mean that they have three of them packed in. Snakeskin Veil just chilling. Burn down the house. Snakeskin Veil doesn't protect Ruiner from five damage. That's brutal. Okay, so creature off the top. Oh, Jund Utility for sure. Hey, Picnic Ruiner. Welcome back, buddy. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Let's get you on the board. <laughs> Reach the multiverse. But, like, Jund Utility is the first thing that comes to mind. But, like, Jund Ramp, too, with that Breach, huh? 
guys. We can't get the Picnic Ruiner above the three. Okay. Not having Indestructible on the Veil is proving itself to be a bad thing in this game. Although I do think the plus one plus one counter is gonna do is gonna do more gold rush. <laughs> okay, it's not bad. As soon as we see one of our uh, hasty things, the explosion could be wild. Passes back tonight. Of course, Celeste has gained him three life this game so far alone. Celeste is just so good, so good. It's that it's that sweet spot of three mana ramp spells, man. I love it. Itali, all right opponent just whatever you do don't take one of my hasty creatures okay that's all i ask that's all i ask buddy breach the multiverse holy cow dude i almost passed out that's a great hit that's a great hit off of atali <laughs> Oh man, and then the uh, the one from us was what? Just the uh, ancestral anger, was it? It must have been. Okay, they oh they missed big time off of the breach. They only hit a picnic ruiner. Well, going up to eleven, they gained four life so far off this Celestis guys. I, I'm pretty sure this is the opponents. Another snakeskin veil. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, man. The double edict and then the uh, the double board wipe, like all four things getting around the snakeskin veil was just like so brutal, like exactly what the opponent needed to see. But it also might be the only removal in the opponent's deck. They might have very specifically uh, built it that way for a reason. You know what I mean? Down to nine. Any hasty creature off the top, as long as it's not shielders edict number three. Oh, except Archfiend blocks a little bit too well, doesn't it? Yeah, since it's a flyer, too. Oh, it is a hasty creature, too. Oh, no. All right. Well, we're dead next turn, so we're going to go uh, Swift Spear. No matter what, they're... Well, first of all, we're probably not going to hit... Okay, how do we want to do this? I guess we swing and see what they do. I'm pretty sure they block, no matter what. Yeah, we're dead next turn regardless. We go Gold Rush. Alice, Treasure. At that point, what would it be? Inferno would be the best, I suppose. Yeah, Snakeskin Veil vale kind of showing its weakness this game. I think the double strike was the best there. Would there have been a better line to actually do 12 damage? Look at this Celestis, dude. Um, would there have been a better line to actually do 12 if they didn't have a blocker? Like, if it wasn't a chump blocker and they just held removal open instead, like a, a generic go for the throat, then no matter what, the snakeskin veil would have had to come down as protection as we were swinging in. I don't think we would have been able to do 12. I don't think there was an uh, actual way to math that through. That's something to think about, I suppose. Ah, Celestis. How, how I love you and how you do so much. For the opponents all the time. Wait a minute, Celestis. Celestis, why, why do I love you? You always work so well for the opponents. All right, opponent goes first here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it. You know, for not having too many creatures packed in, we're seeing all of our creatures when we need to see it. Swing for one. Uh, Slickshot Show Off, I hope, makes a little bit more of an appearance today, too. And also, just, like, I want to see more of the treasure nonsense, too. Uh, now that we, we did a little bit more jank today... I think I want to focus on a, a few decks for the next couple videos that I think might just actually just be really good. That way we can uh, get some more victories too because winning's nice. Winning is nice sometimes. 
Although I feel like this deck's doing a thing overall, isn't it? Even though I called it janky, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I'm being too mean. To the poor little gold rush build. Well, I hate to say it, guys, but the one time we don't have snakes can bounce. <laughs> we can get this above the uh, three, luckily, though, so we'll go for it. Because treasure token is really good. And so is prowess. Down to 11. I was going to get Picnic Ruiner down, but running right into an Elspeth Smite kind of changes the plan a little bit, doesn't it? Mm, Twinferno. This one of Twinferno, yeah, like giving double strike to something, it is really explosive, especially on the Slick Shot, but I, I think there's a reason I only have one of these in here. You know what I mean? Like, look at this board state, for example. This Twinferno isn't doing too much, and it's not even going to give... The Picnic Ruiner double strike when we need to, so. I mean, of course, Twinferno could target the Picnic Ruiner, but you know what I mean. I will attempt the swing, see what happens. Because double strike on the Swiss Spear still isn't bad. I'm gonna have the Candy Trail for the turn, it looks like. Yeah, all four Snakeskin Veil, even though Snakeskin Veil did nothing for us last turn, like, this is a great example. Like, keeping a Snakeskin Veil open this turn against this deck would be huge for us. Um, although Board Wipe, it is a Board Wipe turn, isn't it? Temporary Lockdown, crap. Okay, that's a problem. It's a problem. Ancestors. Ancestors Aid. I think we play this as a land. All right, guys, we're in trouble, dude. We're in trouble. Because I don't know how this Picnic Ruiner is actually going to do the thing that it needs to do. Ooh, what are you? Oh. Exile up to one target creature until this leaves the battlefield. Oh. I'm attached to a creature for as long. There's a copy of the creature card exile. Oh, this is that's a neat card, dude. All right, all right. So we have five protection spells in. So it's not like it's not like we have eight of them. So we can't we can't scream unlucky for not seeing any here. But it would have been really really good if we did see some. Uh, technically, the deck should be explosive enough to get through. Oh, synthesizer. Okay. Okay, the opponent's going to have a good time here. I, I put together an is it list with Synthesizer, but I like it takes way too many Mythics, so I'm, I'm waiting a little bit to crack more packs before I get it together, but it's like a really fun card. I'll read it in a second here when I get a chance. All right, I don't mind seeing as much as possible to stack onto Slickshot when it makes an appearance. Yep, I don't mind that at all. So Synthesizer... They get that scry. Whenever another artifact... Oh, yeah, here they go. Here they go, guys. Yeah, they work on each other, too. So whenever they cast an artifact... No, no, not cast. Whenever another artifact with mana value 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, they get a 0, zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus 1, plus 1 for each artifact you control. <laughs> How fun is that card? Okay, Slickshot Showoff is going to make an appearance, I promise. I promise, dude. Then look at this. Then look at this hand, huh? Thousand Moon Smithy. This is sick. Opponent. Oh my goodness, dude. Well, we're actually... We're going to die next turn. Slickshot off the top is literally our only hope. And I think we would win. I think Slickshot off the top is lethal. No, slick shot. Where are you? What was it? Uh, a, a one in eleven chance. A little less than that, like a one in twelve chance. Come on, that should have been easy peasy. All right, we'll have some fun on the opponent's turn then. Drop some of these for them. Really sick stuff. This happened really fast too. The double synthesizers on the board is wild. All right, so you get. Plus two, plus zero, oh, and first try, get a treasure token. And you get 
plus two plus on first strike. I get a treasure token. And you. Wait a minute. Target creature you control. Aww. Aww. I, w I wanted to give the... <laughs> I wanted to give one of these double strike. I'm upset now. I guess it didn't matter because the first strike still would have gone through and ended it. Really neat deck opponent. I can't even be mad about that. Uh, temporary lockdown came on, I want to say right on time, but I actually think that was their turn four. That was a sick play to get around that Elspeth Smite there too. Also, uh, Snakeskin Veil wouldn't have helped against the temporary lockdown, by the way, so. Hmm... Hmm, 35 minutes in, guys. We're going to go one more because I really want to see Slickshot show off. We got all four of them in here. We did see it do a thing once today, but I want to see it do another thing. Man, that would have been such a cool top deck, huh? Oh, I would have clipped that for sure. For the shorts. For the YouTube shorts. Okay. There it is. There's our gold hound, too. No gold rush in hand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can't complain about this hand by any means. So, start with Gold Hound. Turn two, probably Plot. Because removal is just everywhere all the time. Even if we're up against Boros, like they have the case of the uh, of the train or whatever that card is called. And that case is pretty good. Pretty effective removal while actually maintaining things on the board, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They keep him too open? Oh, no. That's probably not... That's probably not a good sign for us. Yeah, we... We don't want the slick shot to just get burnt away, so we're going to take the turn to plot. And now we have, we'll have have Snakeskin Veil av available. Well, well, they tap out anyways. But they do get a blocker in the air. So the trample from the anger probably going to be pretty good here. Uh, try not to use the treasure on the Ancestor's Aid, and we probably do our best to go all in this turn. Right? As long as we keep Snakeskin Veil open, that's all that matters. So we'll start with giving Trample to the show-off. Hmm, land off the top, okay. So if we go Audacity on Goldhound, it's a good swing. It's not bad, and then Snakes can Veil still open. They double block, we take care of the Evangelist, we get there. Um, Ancestors Aid, keep one open, Audacity. It's just Audacity, right? And we'll go ahead and spread this out a little bit. If a double block there, they get one bat in the air. We draw one for next turn and keep the snakeskin veil open as protection. That's pretty good. Yeah, double block's good for us. Oh, except. Except. Now, this is important. Since they'd be generating that one bat. They're down to 10. Uh, since they'd be generating that one bat, they would have a blocker for the show-off, and guess what? We no longer have a way to give Trample to the show-off for the turn two. That's noteworthy. Maybe Audacity should have just went on to the show-off. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Keeping the Snakeskin Veil back just hasn't been doing as much today as I thought it would be. Like, for real, I thought the Snakeskin Veil was going to be wild. Although, it, it, like, don't get me wrong, it hasn't been bad. But it's kind of, it's kind of like, there's always so much spot removal all the time, except when you have that protection open. That's what it kind of feels like, you know what I mean? Okay, so they still have a good double block into the Gold Hound. Uh, they tapped their one flyer, so Slick Shot Show Off. We... We really desperately needed to just put everything onto the show-off, guys, including the audacity. So hopefully we don't see mana off the top. Oh. Menace on the gold hound. All right. Now we just go all in and swing, because this only plays humans. The ad ought to do it. 
So, forest. And you. Wait, do they? Okay, it's a uh, blood token being held open. So that's eight. Swing. Snake skin veil. Very nice, guys. Yeah, they needed to be able to tap the menacing gold hound here. That is 11. I don't know what that cavern could be, except for the blood token, so. Very nice. Great way to wrap up the evening. Got to see the slick shot show off. We got to see the gold hound actually doing a thing there, too. The menace on the gold hound, like, just everything about gold hound has always just been so good to me. I, I just love the card so much. A nice little budget card, too. It's uh, common. Then, of course, it fits the treasure theme really nicely. So overall, I called this deck, I, I said this is probably a janky version of Gruul uh, to put Gruul together for the explosion with the Slickshot show off, but overall, it just didn't feel that bad, did it? I thought it was going to be janky, but yeah, it just, it didn't feel bad. First of all, Ancestor's Aid, uh, Ancestor's Aid here is not a bad combat trick by any means when you're already trying to pop off. Because what ends up happening is you play this, you get the treasure, then you can also play like, <clears throat> excuse me guys, and you can also play like Monstrous Rage on the same turn off of the treasure. All of that's really good. You don't use the treasure, maybe you keep it open for Veil. Maybe you don't pop the treasure with the Veil either. Gold Rush becomes way stronger, which I would have loved to see Gold Rush do uh, more today. Did we actually, did it do anything? I'm not 100% certain right now, guys. I've been playing been playing way too much magic the last couple days. Uh, it really showed in yesterday's video where I, I had so many like little misplays, especially in like the middle of the video. And that deck was really hard to play too. I really should have waited. Really, really should have waited to play Salt Tie Ramp for yesterday's video or done some more practice games on it too, right? And just uh, stayed in my comfort zone for the first little bit here. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, that that has nothing to do with this deck at all. Anyways, <laughs> Gold Rush, man. How often are you going to give plus six, plus six to something? Not very often. How often are you going to give plus four, plus four to something? I would say pretty often. And um, then at that point, it becomes like the, um, what is it? What is it? It's like uh, Titanic Growth. Titanic Growth is two mana, target creature gets plus four, plus four, right? But Gold Rush creates the treasure token first. So you get a treasure token. It's going to be, like I said, I think it's going to be pretty often that you actually get the plus four, plus four, and then you can use that treasure token again, keep it open for protection or something like that. So our protection of choice today didn't have indestructible. And so that meant... Well, that meant a lot of things. First of all, Shieldred's Edict would have gotten around a Tameo's safekeeping anyways. But the board wipes, guys. The board wipes, we could have used that indestructible on the safekeeping quite effectively. So your protection of choice is going to matter. Just remember that the plus one, plus one counters on the Veil really do go the extra mile. Um, so it's going to depend on what you're seeing. If you need more protection against indestructible... I didn't think that was even going to happen. Usually when we see board wipes, it's just like Sunfall anyway, so it's Exile. So something to consider. Tameo Safekeeping also gives you a little bit of life, which could help you against uh, Mono Red, especially if they went first to you. Maybe that'll give you that one extra turn, fizzle out their play with fire that they tried to use to remove your Picnic Ruiner. Outside of that, like we can imagine... We, we can imagine some other things that could go in here if we wanted to... Like, first of all, I can't type today at all. <clears throat> giant growth right and this is just one mana plus three plus three is pretty darn good in a prowess style build like this but as soon as you start going up this other stuff like uh commando faces kakazan and stuff like that too you're gonna find that you're running out of room for the treasure theme in here it's a very light treasure theme but like that is definitely what i was going for for this build um which is why i called it janky but at the same time it just yeah it just wasn't that bad was it like the double audacity really realistically liked everything in here i think i dropped down to one rockfall veil though i think that's going to slow us down more than not what would i go up just drop down to 19 land go up something else no probably not actually i don't even think i'm going to change anything 
I still just like the one Twinferno too. Like we kind of saw how in a lot of those games too, Twinferno's just kind of chilling in hand because the opponent removed all our creatures anyway. So what would we prefer? Maybe like more protection? Probably not though, right? Still gonna like that one Twinferno to go ahead and wrap up uh, very specific games. But since cards like Picnic Ruiner are giving themselves double strike anyways, our main targets at that point are just the slick shot show off in the Monastery Swiss Spear, because even giving double strike to the Gold Hound isn't that great, because Gold Hound already has first strike anyways, so it's not much of a combat trick at that point. Gold Hound's only a 1 1, it doesn't have prowess either, so if you're giving it double strike, hopefully you gave it something else too, like the Gold Rush. Which, yeah, I suppose is a possibility, right? You have turn one Gold Hound, okay, turn two. Now, see, that's. That's pretty slow, because turn two, you go gold rush, and you only have one treasure, so it would all happen on turn three. But maybe you go turn one gold hound, turn two gold hound, turn three, if for some reason the opponent didn't remove anything, you go gold rush onto the first gold hound. You have two gold hounds plus the treasure, so it's plus six. That's a seven, seven gold hound, right? And then you still have mana left over thanks to the treasure to activate the twin inferno. Even then, that's not even that great of a line of play, is it? Because, like, you do the Twinferno. It's not, again, this doesn't have prowess in and of itself. So a full swing there, if they don't block either gold hounds, would still only be, and you use a treasure too, it would only be, what, 15 total damage? So you didn't win there. But that still is turn three. So I don't know what I'm complaining about, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, I really like the treasure theme. Really like everything about it. Slick shot show off, dude. I guess we got to get used to it, at least for now, until like people start building specifically around it. I guess, what, just more instant speed spot removal? Maybe that's why that opponent was playing so many Shieldred's Edicts. Maybe he was running into a lot of issues with people protecting their slick shot show off. That's very possible, guys. It really is. Another big issue with show off at that point then would be the opponent doubling down on him. Just double plotting and just waiting and drawing and just waiting and just like, yeah, trying to go explosive as possible in one turn. Play them both on the same turn. Shield or Zedic still only cleans up one and then you'd still have protection for the other one too. Guys, enough rambling, huh? You made it this far into the video for real y'all are champions. Make sure you check out that description where we got that Discord link as well as that Patreon link too if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. Highly recommend the Patreon if you have a lot of suggestions because I, I guarantee patron suggestions. Well, as long as there's not like 20, as long as there's not 20 suggestions from the same patron, right? Like within reason, of course. I just worded that funny, so I wanted to clarify. <laughs> um, But yeah, no, like I, I am pretty backed up on suggestions right now, especially comment suggestions as I the order of priority is first of all patron suggestions then second of all discord suggestions and then uh, third of all comment suggestions and I always try my dandiest to get around to as many as possible but that does mean some fall through the cracks especially at the beginning of uh, new sets where uh, uh, I get a lot more suggestions so all right guys yeah we'll, we'll what is it that I like to say? Enough rambling, huh? All right. I'll see you in the next video.